Welcome back to Game Day, you. I'm Tyler DeLuca, joined by Jack Horan and Dakota McDowell Wapakichi. Boys, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? Good. Doing good. Just I'm got back good. from spring break. It was great. Good. Good. I'm glad you had a good spring break. Someone who didn't have a great spring break was the Oklahoma Sooners, who saw their season come to an end to the Notre Dame Fighting Irish in dominant fashion, 108 to 64, and the Fighting Irish came out on fire. Dara Mabry had 28 points on seven threes, and it feels like they all came in the first quarter, and they did it on both ends of the floor, causing over 28 total turnovers for the Sooners, the highest mark on the entire season. And Dakota, what do you feel like was the biggest reason for the Sooner loss? I feel like we didn't see any willpower to even win. I mean, that first quarter was really t terrible. Notre Dame scoring 35 points. Uh, Taylor Robertson was really the only one out there that looked like she was going to score a little bit and have some fun. Um, but, like, where was Maddie Williams? Where was the supporting cast? It was uh, quite disgusting. And three of the Notre Dame players, you know, they, they scored over 20 points. And you're not going to do anything when you allow that to happen. It's, it's a want to win. It's a want to win situation. You want to go to the Sweet 16. You want to go to the Elite Eight. You want to keep going. But when you play like that, you show that you don't even want to win like that. So it was kind of bad. And uh, sadly, it came to an end for them. So it's tough. That's a good point. Uh, you talked a little bit about the offense. I'm going to look at the defensive side of the ball. OU just came out, and it looked like they were just out of sorts, and they had a lack of com communication uh, on the defensive side of the ball. The switches were slow, and there was a lot of everyone pointing at who was guarding who, and that led uh, Dara to be wide open for a lot of shots. And it was just kind of weird, because OU hasn't played like that all year, and there hasn't been much confusion on defense, but in this game, there was. Yeah, I think that's going to be the biggest point for me, was the communication. It seemed like there was just, everyone was just out of sync. It was just a weird, weird game for the Sooners in its entirety. We saw Matty Williams in the post game talk about how individuals were locked in, but the team wasn't locked in together. And it was pretty apparent on both sides of the ball, I feel like. Jenny Baranchik also mentioned that there was times where they dribbled instead of passing, passing instead of shooting. And it just seemed like this was a different Sooner team that we had really saw all, all year. All year. And we've, we've seen them kind of have this happen a couple times throughout the year, but not to the extreme that we saw against Notre Dame. And I, I think that when you, you could tell it was whether it was just a pass that was a little bit late, a pass that was a little bit early, not looking for a pass. It, on the offensive end, a lot of those turnovers and credit to Notre Dame because they were playing fantastic defense. But a lot of those were self-inflicted wounds by the Sooners when it was just a lot of miscommunication, a lot of mistiming. And it was like everyone was playing a different song in the orchestra. And it was just a mass amount of noise and none of it sounded good at all for Oklahoma. But it was still a good season all around. Great season, great season. Yeah, and especially in Jenny Bronchek's first year oh, yeah. as a whole. So, Dakota, who was your Sooner MVP for the entirety of this season? I'm going to go with the sharpshooter herself, Taylor Robertson. She's got some great statistics here, 17.2 points per game. She shot 44.4% from beyond the arc. That's quite impressive just even shooting over 40%. But um, she actually finished top seven, uh, really seventh place in the nation for three points. Uh, percentage and it was it was really nice not only that she made the most three-pointers in the nation and she attempted the most three-pointers in the nation so it was awesome 274 attempts 124 makes uh, she had a great season something that you're gonna look at and be comparing to her for years to come whenever you think about one of the greatest shooters in the, uh, in, in the league so it was quite impressive for her and and even like she set big 12 records too yeah. about when it with her three-point yeah. shooting the amount of makes and she you could literally say that she is the greatest shooter in Big 12 history, and she still has another season That's left. Scary. So it's going to be very, very exciting to see what record she could possibly break yeah. next year. Jack? Uh, can't go wrong with Taylor Robertson, but I'm going to have to go with Maddie Williams. Uh, she averaged 18 points a game, 7.5 rebounds a game, and 2.5 and assists per game. And really, when OU is at their best, Maddie Williams is leading the charge, and she's the heart and soul of that team. So when she goes, the entire team goes. So I feel like she would be a good candidate for season MVP for that reason. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you on that. I think Maddie Williams is the MVP. I mean, even if just looking at the sample size of the Notre Dame game, OU gets down at, in that first quarter, and Maddie Williams isn't really scoring. She then gets two fouls, gets into foul trouble, doesn't play the entire rest of the first half at that point, and then OU goes down big. I don't think that's any type of coincidence. When Maddie Williams isn't playing like the Maddie Williams that we've seen, OU doesn't play like the OU team that we've seen. And I think that very much 
coincides. And, I mean, just all around, Maddie Williams does it all on both the offensive and defensive side. She took a huge step up this season with her three-point shooting. That was something that she didn't really have last season, and it added just a, another layer of depth to her arsenal, to her bag that was already pretty deep last year. And we saw in that last season as well with the Sooner Six that she's able to defend bigger players. And that's something that she wasn't asked to do as often this season when you have Lampkin, when you have Scott. But she still did it plenty, even in the Notre Dame game, when they have two 6-3 players, Maddie Williams started off on one of the 6-3 bigs. And that's something that she can do because of how physical she is on the defensive end. And then just her leadership as well. Nobody is more energized, nobody is more vocal on the court than Maddie Williams herself. Every play, she's clapping, she's flexing, whatever it is, she's always doing something and communicating with her team that makes her a fantastic leader as a whole. And I think just all around, while Taylor Robertson might be the biggest offensive threat, yeah. I think that Maddie Williams is the heart of this team, the engine of this team that really kind of keeps everything going. But, I mean, you can't go wrong with either of those picks <laughs> at all. So, for Dakota, kind of looking ahead for next season, I mean, most of this team is staying. Only Lampkin is graduating. What do you feel like is the biggest improvement we can see for the Sooners? I think size. Uh, size is really important because you have uh, Maddie Williams. You know, she's only five foot eleven. Uh, it's pretty tall, but still not six foot compared to some of the the forwards and centers in the Big Twelve specifically. But um, size is really what's important. You know, the average size of the starting five here at OU is five foot nine. When we compare that to Texas, is five foot eleven. Um, but Texas does have six three, six two forwards and centers, whereas Liz Scott's the only one that's close to that size to compete. Um, Recruits coming into OU is going to be really important. They've got Beatrice Culleton from Kansas coming in. She's six foot three. You got Kirsten Johnson from Duncanville, uh, Texas, six foot three. So it's going to be really important to pull in those freshmen right there. But do we know if they're going to play? Probably not. We'll see. They're freshmen. You had uh, uh, Kelby Washington this year that played as a freshman a good amount of uh, minutes. So uh, whatever happens, happens. But I'm really excited to see that size come in because I think it'll really improve the team right there. Dakota, I'm going to have to agree with you on that one. Uh, OU has to work on their post defense, and that comes with size, like Dakota said. Uh, so many times this year we saw teams come in and dominate in the low post. We saw Notre Dame in the, uh, in the tournament do that. And like the coach for Notre Dame said, she said that it was uh, part of their game plan was to go into the low post and dominate. And I feel like if they have size and then they work on that post defense a little bit, I feel like OU will be in really good shape for next year. Yeah, I think that that is probably the most glaring weakness when it just comes to the personnel yeah. aspect of it. It's just that every team knows that there's this season you can, you can attack inside yeah, just because really of the side. But I think that there's something that you can improve on, even with just the roster in hand right now, and that's just consistency. We've seen a couple different versions of the OU team this season. We saw the team that beat Baylor twice. We saw the team that got blown out by Notre Dame. That team that beat Baylor twice would still be dancing in this tournament right now. And obviously, that is not the team that showed up against Notre Dame. And Coach Baranchek talked in the post game about how there was some really, really high highs this season and some really low lows. And with the first year head coach coming into a new school, that's expected. That's okay, but if you want to take that next step up, if you want to be a Baylor, if you want to be a UConn, if you want to be a Notre Dame, be a South Carolina, you have to have that level of consistency throughout the entire season where you're at that beating Baylor level. You can't be at the beating Baylor level and then go down and lose to Texas Tech. You can't have both of those at the same time and throughout different periods of the season. I think OU had sprints throughout the season but were unable to run the marathon in its entirety. And with that, you see an upset loss to Notre Dame from a five seed being a four, being able to host. And that was a huge accomplishment. And that's not even a knock on this season at all. Because like I said, being a first year head coach, having a completely new game plan coming in, it was a fantastic season. Now that you've had that year in, you're bringing back nearly your entire roster. Now you can kind of find that stability, find that consistency, and know you can take that next level. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, as much as we're talking about it, Notre Dame was really good the other day, but um, OU wasn't that great. Disregard it. Look at the rest of the season. Jenny Baranchek was amazing. It was her first year. Next year is going to be insane because, like I said, they got the size. I'm sure they're going to work on the post development and stuff. Like, it's going to be really nice to see. And you have Taylor and Maddie coming back. I mean, uh, Taylor was just honorable mention for All American. I mean, that was great. Uh, Maddie Williams, if you can help me there, it was she really solid season. Yeah. So it it's going to be nice to have them back. Better, which is kind of scary to think about. Really see them going even deeper in the tournament, better in the conference tournament, and playing for a, a conference championship. Yeah, absolutely. Well, when we come back, we will talk about the entirety of the NCAA tournament, so make sure you stick around.
When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk a mile in my shoes. How prepared is your family if a tornado shows up at your doorstep, or a flood, or a hurricane? You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov plan now. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, let's go. You'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes. Make a plan today. Welcome back to Game Day U. This March Madness Tournament has been exactly that, madness. Some of the most upsets we have ever seen in a tournament in history. So Dakota, who has been your most surprising team so far? Uh, Ohio State with the Big Ten. Um, they aren't a horrible seat, they're six seed, not bad at all. Um, but they barely scraped by Missouri State in the first round. That could have been an upset. Um, they won by seven points. Going into the fourth quarter, they were only winning by one point. So I was a little bit worried there. Um, but Ohio State in that next round played LSU, and they won that. I was, I was kind of shocked because I had LSU going farther in the tournament, actually, to my final four. Um, so it was a little bit of a... I'm like, oh, wow, okay, I, I see what's going on here. You know, you didn't really see that because in the conference tournament, Ohio State was knocked out quick. Um, they lost in, in their conference tournament, and really they were the one seed going in. So I wasn't really expecting too much. But uh, in this NCAA tournament, you have them beating LSU and uh, looking to have a really good run. Now this next game, it's against, uh, it's against Texas, so pretty tough team to beat. Um, but Ohio State been really surprising, uh, especially because I really liked LSU going into this tournament. But Ohio State's looking great. Following that uh, underdog pick, I'm going to go with South Dakota on this one. They've beaten Ole Miss, and that was number seven, and Baylor at number two. Uh, and they beat the Bears by 14 points, which is a pretty sizable amount of points to beat a really solid team in Baylor. And I think just going on to the tournament, they're going to this confidence that they have after beating Baylor is just going to propel them into a more S significant yeah, keep, that yeah keep it keep it rolling with the win against Baylor they didn't just beat Baylor they took they the dominated. life they took the they life out of Baylor. Baylor it was like where's there was no urgency there was, there was no fight they held Melissa Smith to 10 points like that was a that was not the Baylor team we saw like in the Big 12 tournament even and it was it was weird like it was it, really it, it was just like there was no energy like because yeah, I mean yeah. Baylor usually plays with a little bit of swagger too and there was just nothing there they got punched in the mouth went down like 12 points to zero to start the game and yeah. could just never come back. Looked South Dakota just a little bit to some degree, yeah. but I don't know. They came out really no, flat. It's, it's definitely possible that, that yeah. that's what happened because it, it, it sure seemed it. like it, yeah. yeah. For me, I, I think the biggest surprise is pretty obvious. It's Creighton. They beat Iowa in yeah. Iowa, but even before then, they were 10C, which means they played a 7. They upset Colorado, who honestly, I wasn't too high on Colorado. They had a really up and down season, but Creighton had come off two back-to-back -back losses to DePaul and Seton Hall. Two teams that, I mean, Anissa Moro for DePaul is very good, but they lost in the first four. They're not some great team by any means. And Seton Hall isn't up there either. They lost to both of those and then came into the March Madness tournament, and it was a completely different team. As I said, they beat Colorado, but the game everyone's talking about is the fact that they beat Iowa in Iowa, and Caitlin Clark went MIA because of their defense. She shot four for 19. Four for 19. The team shot 22.7% from three. A good three-point shooting team at yeah. that. Like a really good shooting team. And they were just nowhere to be found. 
And then you add the fact that you have Lauren Jensen, who transferred from Iowa to Creighton, coming back to Iowa to hit the game-winning three. Oh, that's storybook. Yeah. That's storybook. That's something you see out of a movie right That's there. what I'm saying. So there's no better Cinderella team, if you want to call it that. There's no better upset than Lauren Jensen returning to Iowa yeah. with this Creighton team, and they are on a roll. And, I mean, Iowa, man, it's – it's. I don't know. I was yeah. kind of shocked. Yeah. Caitlin Clark, man, she's yeah. she's like that. Yeah. <laughs> she goes out there and gets whatever she wants on offense, but yeah. not then. Yeah, and so kind of on that note, most disappointing teams, because there's been, there's been a couple of them. So, Dakota, who's yours? I just talked about a team that uh, didn't do great in the conference tournament and then came into the NCAA and is, doing, is having a nice run. Uh, but let's go opposite of that. I'm going to talk about a team that did amazing in, the, uh, in their conference tournament. Kentucky, where were you in the first round? I mean, come on, man. You lost to Princeton. And no disrespect to Princeton. Princeton's good. Yeah, Don't I, sleep on Princeton. I know. I'm saying no disrespect. Don't sleep on Princeton. No disrespect to them. But they've made nine tournaments. They've, out of those nine, they've only won two games. They, they've only made the second round in, like, in those two games. So it was kind of disappointing because I'm like, dude, you beat the best team in the nation in South Carolina. You beat them. Y'all played great. But where were you in that first round? So it was kind of really disappointing because when you beat South Carolina, you must think, okay, Kentucky's, Kentucky's got to be a good team. And they played amazing. It was not like South Carolina was just bad. S Kentucky was just really good in that conference tournament. So uh, it was really disappointing to see them go flat in the first round. So, Speaking of teams going flat, I'm going to follow the South Dakota point that I just made. And for my dis most disappointing team, it has to be Baylor. I think about 99% of people that made a bracket or were watching the games did not have Baylor losing that game at all. I know I didn't. Yeah. And Baylor just, they just came out flat and they got straight up outplayed by South Dakota. Right. It was not even close. They let, much like the OU and Notre Dame game, uh, South Dakota just came out hot and they never looked back and they just dominated. And I was very surprised and kind of disappointed in Baylor. Right. Well, for me, I'm going to follow my point as well. And I kind of just mentioned it. But Iowa, what happened? Yeah. You were picked. People were saying Caitlin Clark is the best player in the nation. And maybe she is. Fair point. Maybe she is. Yeah. She didn't play point. like it. Mm -mm. She did not play like it. Not in Iowa. Not in front of, I think, a sold-out crowd in Iowa. It was packed in there. And she, like I said, four for 19. And my thing is, and I'm not even, I, you have off nights. There's, there's, there's things like that. But the play where I realized but I was going to be most disappointed in Iowa across this entire tournament was at the end of the game where Caitlin Clark goes up for a layup, she gets contact, and she stays on the ground. No whistle, no nothing. Ball is still live, rebounding, and she is still on the ground, head down. You have to get up. You have to make a play. You are the leader of this team. If you want to be the best player in the nation, you don't get to do that. Your game is good enough for you to go and hoop. You don't have to play for the whistle. You're Caitlin Clark. You are one of the best players, if not the best player in the nation. Play like it. Go hoop. You have the bag that's deep enough for that. You don't have to rely on the referees to go get you a bucket. You don't have to go to the free throw line. You are Caitlin Clark, and she didn't play like it. And Iowa as a whole fell down because of that. So obviously, yes, the team shooting wasn't great. I mean, Creighton's defense was there, and, that, and that's credit to Creighton as well because they played good. But Caitlin Clark... I, I, I mean, there's no other way around it. She was disappointing. And it, it, I think it's pretty shocking. I think that's kind of what everyone had feared when it came to Iowa was, if Caitlin Clark's not on, then what? Yeah. Then what? And they lose. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and now, and and now we know what they happens. Right. <laughs> so now we'll, we'll kind of go back to the positives, though. Dakota, who's been your player of the tournament so far? Uh, so far, you know, Louisville didn't have a great conference tournament showing either. But Haley Vanlith and Louisville have really turned that around. Haley Vanlith, through two, game has, uh, two games, have scored 41 points. I mean, she's really killing it. And when we look at that conference tournament, when she didn't play great, she had eight points. They lost in the ACC quarterfinal. Now that she's playing good and she's getting over 20 points a game in this NCAA tournament, they're winning. They're looking really great. So, really, so far, she's got to be one of the best players in the tournament. Uh, I know y'all probably have some different picks, but she's looking really solid. She's gotten into her bag, back to where who she is. So. That's not a bad pick. Uh, for this one, I'm going to pick Olivia Miles, a freshman from Notre Dame. And 
Tyler, she's this a, one is a little. Fantastic. We got to we got to had the pleasure of seeing her at in no. Norman in the tournament, no. and she dropped a triple double on UMass, and she threw some of the craziest passes that I have ever seen a point guard throw. Yeah, as, she, a as, a as, a as a freshman, as a freshman, as a freshman, as a freshman, as a freshman. And she didn't slow down one bit at all against OU, and she just was throwing dimes left and right and running that uh, running gun type of offense against OU. And she had 23 assists through her first two March Madness games, which is the first player to do that since 2000. Yeah which is crazy. As a freshman, that's again, a freshman. as a freshman. Yeah. She's the real deal, and that's my uh, player of the tournament so far. You, you talk about the triple-double and being a freshman. She's the first freshman, men's or women's, to ever have a triple-double in the NCAA Jeez. tournament. You realize how many incredible freshmen have played in these tournaments, yeah. like, yeah. in history, yeah. for both of them, and, and she's, she's the, the one. one. And a story program like Notre Dame. Exactly. Uh, for me, you guys both talked about guards. I'm going down low. I told you that Nas Hillman is a star. I told you this. She's had 24 points both times. She's had over 24 yeah. points. She's had 11 rebounds both times. And there was really nobody around her. And she is doing this. Everyone knows that Michigan is going to play through Nas Hillman, and it just doesn't matter. All the other lottery picks that were projected for the WNBA draft have been eliminated. So Nas Hillman's stock is on the rise, and you best believe I've already invested because she is absolutely a star, and I told you so, and you did. You did. I told you so. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make that very, very clear because she is probably, I mean, one of the best players still left in this yeah. when you see like Melissa Smith, Ryan Howard, eliminated. And she doesn't have the help that those teams have. Exactly, exactly. But we talked about what's happened in the tournament. Now let's look ahead. You'll hear our final fours and our championship picks next on Game Day U. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk a mile in my shoes. How prepared is your family if a tornado shows up at your doorstep, or a flood, or a hurricane? You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov plan now. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, let's go. You'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes. Make a plan today. Welcome back to Game Day U. We're in the Sweet 16 right now, but let's look ahead to some potential Final Fours. Dakota, what do your four winners look like? I've got Louisville, North Carolina State, Texas, and South Carolina. Um, of course, you know, I'm sliding South Carolina in there. You can't really uh, bet against them. And as Tyler said, if you do bet against them, you'd be a fool. Um, the next one, though, a little bit different. Uh, Texas, you know, I'm, I'm riding high on them. They've got a solid team. They've really turned it up in the second half of the, of the season, and they won the conference tournament. So I really got them going farther in here and um, a little bit shocking later on. But, yeah, so got them. NC State, really tough region right there. You got uh, some great teams like UConn um, and Notre Dame there. But NC State's an amazing team. So, uh, yeah, I got them. Louisville. Great team. I just talked about Haley Van Lith earlier. She's scoring a whole lot more, um, but they also have an amazing team surrounding, uh, surrounding her. Uh, so I've got the, those four teams going into the Final Four right there. We do have some of the same teams. Obviously, I have South Carolina. But uh, in my Final Four, I have UConn, Texas, and Michigan. I'm sliding, Ooh, Michigan. I'm sli I'm sliding Michigan into okay. the Final Four. See? 
You understand not so much the star. I get, I'm, I'm getting there. All of these teams have been playing great in the tournament so far, and I don't see them slowing down anytime soon. Michigan is a little bit of a sleeper pick, I'll say that, because they'd have to beat Louisville or Tennessee to get there. But I think with the way Nas Hillman is playing, I think they can do it. Uh, UConn is going to ride on Paige Becker's shoulders. She's a star. And, yeah, Texas, like, like Dakota said, uh, Texas is playing really well with Roy Harmon. I'm a big Roy Harmon fan, so they're playing really well. And, obviously, South Carolina. The, what, what else needs to be said about South Carolina? What else needs to say, be said about that? Right. Well, for me, the number one seed in the entire tournament is going to be in the Final Four. I got South Carolina because they're the best defense in the nation. Everyone's panicking because they didn't score a lot of points. Well, they scored more than Miami because their defense is that good. So I have South Carolina in there, without a doubt. Next, I have Texas. So we all have picked Texas, wow. which I think is Surprising, good. but. No Stanford? I, th I think Texas is going to beat Stanford. Woo. Stanford has a really cool thing going on with their three-pointers made to uh, support Ukraine, but really, Texas has really impressed us. I, I, we could see that. They've really trended upwards. Maybe maybe some Big 12 bias a little bit. Maybe, maybe seeing them in person yeah. a little bit. But, I mean, I'm in on it too. Yeah. But I, I truly think that Texas, it's kind of the reverse of South Carolina. Everyone's talking about South Carolina's offense when their defense has been incredible. And everyone's talked about Texas' defense because that's been incredible. But their offense has been off the charts. They had 63% shooting against Utah. What? For a defensive team? That's, yeah. that's insane. And I think Roy Harmon, is, she's one of them ones. She, Roy Harmon is a bucket. She's one of the most tenacious defenders I've ever seen live in person. She's always just bugging the offensive player and is such a nuisance on the defensive end in the best way possible. So I think Texas is going to go far. I like Louisville as well. I, I worry with Michigan about just – who surrounded them. Yeah, and, and especially because either Louisville or Tennessee both have the size yeah. to match up with Nas Hillman. Because Nas Hillman isn't a super tall player. Yeah. She's just extremely skilled. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see like how that defensive matchup kind of goes. Marks, I had to put a sleeper in there. No, I, I love it. Well, here's my sleeper. Give me Notre Dame Ooh. out of Bridgeport. Ooh. I don't think that there is a team right now okay. outside of maybe Texas that is playing all around better team basketball than Notre Dame. Olivia Miles, I am on board with the Olivia Miles fan club because I'm she's right there with you. She, I'm right I, there. her vision as a point guard, otherworldly. I love what Neil Ivey has done with this team. They have shooting on the outside with Mary, and they have two six foot three bigs down low. So they have the size, they have the shooting, they have the playmaking. They communicate super well on defense. When we saw in person, they, and they they've now shown because they usually play two three. They now show that they can play man against OU and dominate. I don't think that there's really a team right now that's – I mean, it's all about – I mean, like Notre Dame struggled throughout the season, but it's all about playing your best basketball at the best time, and there is no better time than March to be playing your best basketball. And Neil Ivey even said that afterwards, that this is the first time for 40 minutes they've played a complete game on both sides, and that was against Oklahoma. And if they can ride that momentum into Bridgeport, NC State better be worried, and then UConn better be worried for an at-home upset between two blue bloods. I am not mad at that pick whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, but like Notre Dame is, it, yes, they played a great game against OU. Amazing game even. That was probably one of the best showings out, uh, out of the tournament so far. Um, but OU was also really lacking in that game. Do you really think NC State and UConn can't keep up with yes. Notre Dame? I think, I think if that Notre Dame team comes to play, with that level of offense from the jump, which I know you're not gonna get that level, that level of shooting every night. That's yeah. just that's just like you can't you can't plan for that per se. You can't like, self game plan yeah. for that. But there's a reason OU didn't play well. And, I mean, uh, some of it was self inflicted, but a lot of it was they got rocked they early by the Fighting right Irish. Now. Yeah. They so so I think if 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 and I really think, and this is with a lot of teams this March, it's like what version of a team it's are you gonna get? You know, because if, if early season Notre Dame shows up, they're going to lose to NC State pretty easily. If that version of Notre Dame shows up, every, every team in the country, anybody, South Carolina, Texas, whoever, needs to be worried about this Notre Dame team. I see that. I just worry about when does the gas run out with Notre Dame? Um, because when you, you uh, look at the Notre Dame that played against Louisville uh, in the regular season, it was it was kind of scary. Uh, right. uh, yeah, it was in it was at Notre Dame too, and it was a big point differential right. that Louisville just smacked them. So I'm worried about a good, great team against Notre Dame, but um, that it's so, still a solid pick because Olivia Miles, like you said, is great. Yeah, I, and, and it's March. Yeah. It's March, so who knows? Anything so. Can happen. Yeah, so we have our final fours. Dakota, who is going to be the national champion at the end of this tournament? Well, um, I'm going to stick with Tyler's bias here of Whoa. South Carolina. Whoa. South Carolina. 
<laughs> I, I, I love it. Don Staley's team is amazing. She's really great. And Aaliyah Boston, we talked about Caitlin Clark earlier being like the best player in the nation. And we know she's one of the best. One of. Keyword. Yeah, one of, not the best. And Aaliyah Boston is the best. Um, so whenever you look at a team like that, you're, you're going to have to put them into the championship game. But my next pick, the eyes of Texas will be upon that championship Ooh. game. I'm telling you right now, Rory Harmon, like y'all said, y'all are part of the fan club. I think she's a really solid player. There's some great players on the team, Lauren Ebo. It's going to be tough watching that team because they've got some size on that Texas team to compete against a team like South Carolina with also some great size there. Um, but, yeah, it's, I do have a sleeper team going there. Uh, Texas isn't really too much of a sleeper yeah, team since they're, they're a two seed. seed. Sleeper, two but seed. whenever you look at the season for Texas, you're like, okay, that's a really interesting pick because you got teams like, uh, like I said, NC State, Louisville, um, that I'm picking Texas over. Yeah. Um, but, of course, you know, South Carolina just wins there. But, yeah, Texas, man, they're going to make it. I, I've got some big, big, like, I believe they are going to make it. Yeah. Uh, in my championship game, I also have South Carolina. Obviously, it's kind of oh, hard. Oh, good, good. Th th yeah. they're, in, they're in the championship game, but they're not going to win it. They're not going to win it. I'm taking the UConn Huskies to upset South Carolina, number two seed. I think they have this. Time out. I didn't say my winner because we just knew it was going to be South Carolina, but you're saying UConn? I'm picking UConn. I'm taking Geno. I'm taking Paige oh. Beckers. They have the size to match up with South Carolina, and I think they're going to they're gonna win. I think they're going to pull it off. Same I might be a fool. I might wait, be a fool. Wait. The same UConn team that lost South Carolina earlier this season? Yes. Redemption. Redemption story. The same. That team that was healthy at that time. Sure. And now you have a Paige Beckers who's just now returning, like full minutes from injury. That? That I'm UConn team? I'm taking UConn. That UConn team that's probably not even going to get out of their own region at home? That, no. That's a heavy statement. At home? That's a heavy statement. I'm just saying. Like, I, I don't think that you have the consistency across the board. No. For them, I don't. I don't trust. I mean, Paige Beckers. I mean, obviously. I mean, you you you, you can't you can't yeah. speak enough about how great she is. Yeah. But she is coming off a long-term injury, and like she's been playing for a decent amount of time now. But I, I still like yeah. worry about just the the rust of that and everything. Yeah. And realistically, UConn started playing better after they got used to playing without Beckers. But they had to really grow into that. And I don't know now if uh, it could be a case of they all got better, and uh, as a team, and now you're inserting Beckers into that. Or is it they got used to playing without her, and now you're trying to insert a heavy ball-dominant player into that? Because they struggled against UCF. UCF was very, very physical with them. And I, I'll tell you right now, there's a, some more physical teams on the way. Yeah. And that's why I think South Carolina and Texas are going to be in the national championship. I'm with oh, you, Dakota. Boy, I'm with you. you. I, think, I think that defense is going to reign in these big moments. Because yeah. let me tell you right now, the demise of South Carolina has been way too heavily televised because just because they didn't score a lot against Miami, okay, that's one game. And then you look across the board, UConn didn't score that much against UCF, but nobody's really talking about that. But the South Carolina defense is so much more dominant than any other team in the nation. So, yes, are they going to go and put up 80 points? No, but that's not how South Carolina plays. That's not the style of game that Don Staley plays. When you have the best player in the nation, like I have said all season in Aaliyah Boston, I think that you are going to undeniably win this just off pure dominance. They have such a – they're so tall. They're so all around. You have one of the best point guards in the nation in Destiny Henderson. You have length on the wings for defense. I think that all around South Carolina is just the better team and the best team in the nation. And that's not even a knock at anybody else. I just think South Carolina is at that level. Yeah, what about Texas? I mean, yeah, they're great. It's going to be a fun game. But, dude, like, you're really I – I, I, like, I feel like South Carolina is the all-around better version of Texas. Oh, for sure. Well, I mean, like, te UConn or over UConn? Texas. In my eyes, I was just looking at it. Yeah, I was just looking at it as who's going to guard and match up with Aaliyah Boston, and I felt like UConn had the best chance to do that. Well, I guess but we'll have to. I don't to, know. I might we'll be a have, fool. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. But thank you so much for joining us on Game Day, you both for this episode and for the entire season. That's going to do it for us for this March Madness tournament. Thank you for tuning in. For Tyler DeLuca, Jack Coran, and Dakota McDowell Wapakichi, we will see you next season.